Happy Easter. It is a joy to be here today. The parish news has all sorts of uh, announcements about things that are coming up in the months ahead, uh, but in particular in the center are all the names that are remembered and honored for all of the plants and the beautiful things that adorn our altar this day. Thank you to all of you who have placed some of those there. Uh, it is indeed beautiful here in the sanctuary. Also at the center of the parish news is the connection card. If you need anything from me or the church office or you're visiting with us and would like to be added to our mailing list, please fill it out with the appropriate information and then place it in the offering plate later on in our service when the offerings are received. I want to thank everyone who helped to make the Easter egg hunt a moment ago uh, such a success and a joy with the families and children. It's great to see everyone back out there and on campus. Uh, the breakfast also was incredible. Thank you to the men's club in particular for organizing and cooking and serving and now cleaning up. Do hope they'll get to church eventually. Um, the women's retreat is coming up at the end of September and uh, many of our women enjoy that as an annual event out at Daytona Shores. So take a look at the parish news for details about that. Um, also in the parish news is information about our school stepping stones. First, there's a big thank you for making the book fair uh, the most successful book fair of all time. Uh, and many of you participated in that. Enrollment is open for the fall. You can talk to Miss Lori, uh, who is the director, if you have any questions about that. We're also looking to hire a toddler assistant. Uh, so if you're looking for a job working with children, we'd love to have you and talk to you. And uh, lastly, coming up right before Mother's Day is an opportunity, especially for you moms with little ones, uh, to get a night out. You can drop your little ones off at the school on Friday night, May 6th, and then go out for dinner or get pampered, whatever it is. Uh, so there's details about that. Also coming up this summer are all of our camps, from music camp to vacation Bible school uh, to the uh, mission trip and other things. Take a look at the details about that if you have children or grandchildren who may be interested in that. And just about a month from now, on Sunday, May 15th, we will have our annual congregational meeting where we will uh, elect our, our officers for the church board as well as our budget for the upcoming fiscal year. But it will also be a special meeting because we will uh, have our call meeting. My call here was only supposed to be temporary, but we want to make it permanent. And we're going to do that on, on May 15th. So we need as many of you there as possible on that Sunday. Watch your emails for further updates uh, as we get closer to that in the weeks ahead. I want to thank everyone who has made this Holy Week the special week that it has been. From our music, to our assistants, to our tech teams, and especially to all of you. I know for some of you, this is your first time back and out after the two years of all that we've been dealing with. And we are so happy to have you back and welcome and thank you for putting your trust in us and coming home. Uh, so it is good to be here for that. Today is what our lives are all about in Christ. Uh, during the distribution of the sacrament later on in the service, please follow the ushers who will be in the center aisle in the front here and also ushers in the center aisle in the back to lead you uh, to the tables where you can receive the Lord's Supper. So let us take a moment now of silent prayer and then we're going to rise and join together in our opening hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Please stand as you're able.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We were buried with Christ by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. If you then have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. For you have died, and your life is sitting with Christ in God. On the cross, Jesus said, it is finished. And on Easter, our Father in heaven acknowledged the sacrifice complete by raising our Savior from death. Forgiveness is available to all who call to God in Jesus' name. Let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, we confess that we have not walked in newness of life. We have failed to love you with all that we are and have, and we have not always remembered the new life you bestowed on us in baptism. Lord Jesus, we confess that we have not always sought the things that are above. We have failed to love our neighbors with our thoughts, words, and actions. O Holy Spirit, we have not always relied on your power to amend our sinful lives. Create in us clean hearts and renew a right spirit within us. For we call out to you in Jesus' name. Christ has paid for all our sins. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. As a called and ordained servant of Christ Jesus, I therefore declare the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does value me. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Christ is a risen. Alleluia. Rejoice and praise Him. Alleluia. For our Redeemer burst from the tomb. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. first reading is from Acts chapter 10. Then Peter began to speak to them, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, 
but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name, the word of the Lord. chapter 15. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, 
so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. forward any of our children. Take one each. Good, we're we're good. We got plenty. When your parents say. Yeah. They already want to eat it. Come on down. It's free giveaway day at the church. (laughs) Share some oranges with them, please. Go ahead, go ahead. Pass them back. Pass them back. How about that? You come to church, you get something free. Every single week, though. Yes. That's God's love, right? All right, so what are these? Or baby oranges, otherwise known as the fancy word is clementines or mandarins, right? Yeah. It's kind of round like, like a stone, isn't it? Yeah, no. But, but it reminds us of the stone that's pretty important today. What stone was that? The one that was covering the tomb, right? And that's right. There's a lot about the stone being rolled away today. So that's one of the reasons I gave you 
a mandarin, a baby orange, is to remind you of how the stone was rolled away and the tomb was empty and Jesus had risen. That's the first thing. The second thing is, would you eat it like this? Why not? Because it's hard on the outside. Well, we're getting there. Yeah, hold on to that. You eat the skin, it's kind of gross, right? It's bitter. Have you ever eaten, like, orange skin? No. Tastes terrible. It's terrible, right? And the acid gets Yeah, exactly, exactly. Which, I want you to think a little bit about life. Sometimes life on the outside is kind of hard and bitter and not so good for us, right? Sometimes when you're not feeling well and you look in a mirror and you look at yourself on the outside... You kind of look not so good, right? Or sometimes when you're angry at something, you look, you look that's not very nice to look at, right? Or, or when you're sad, right? Oh, crying, right? Sometimes life on the outside is hard. Sometimes people that we meet on the outside aren't so nice, are they? Sometimes they can be really mean and cruel. But then when we peel away the outside... That's when we get to the good stuff inside, right? That's the fruit. That's what tastes sweet, juicy, right? If you like them, right? Or maybe it's a banana. I might, I might reconsider that May 15th thing at this rate. And when you think of this, I want you to think about who you are on the inside. Because of today, because of Easter, because you are baptized into Jesus, into his resurrection, even though life sometimes on the outside is a little hard and doesn't look so good, and sometimes it's tough to break through, because Jesus is on the inside with us, because we have Jesus' love, it is sweet and it is good. So that's our gift today. Because sometimes life out there is a little crazy, but as long as Jesus is inside of us, everything's going to be good. Everything's going to be okay. So, next time you open an orange, or a banana, or whatever it may be, remember how Jesus is inside you, and you are never alone. Now, you may eat these when your parents say it's okay. Okay? So let us close our eyes, bow our heads, fold our hands, repeat after me, Dear God, thank you. For the joy and the gift of Easter and being with me. Help me to shine forth your love from the inside out. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need to take one for your brother or sister, feel free to do so. Just take the bag. All right. That's it. One more. That's it. You get mine. Don't say I never gave you anything. Today is the biggest and most important and most holy day in our lives as Christians. This is the foundation of our hope and everything that we cling on to. And as we gather together this day, we hear Luke's gospel. The stone is rolled away. The tomb is empty. The angels are there. He is not here. He has risen. But by the time we get to the Gospel of Luke that we read today on this most important and foundational day, we don't meet the resurrected body of Jesus. There's still no body. Now we know what's happened because Luke goes on later on to tell us that Jesus is risen and others will meet him and see him. But isn't it interesting how we gather together on this day, we read this Gospel, we hear the tomb is empty, but we don't hear the proclamation that the resurrected body of Jesus met with anyone. And what's interesting 
is out of the four Gospels, half of them that are read on Easter don't give us the resurrected body of Jesus. Now Matthew's Gospel, which we'll hear next Easter, it does. As the women are leaving the tomb after they find it empty, they run into Jesus. Mark's Gospel that we heard last Easter leaves us when the women are leaving the empty tomb, they're amazed and they're afraid. And that's the end of it. Then Luke today, no body. John's Gospel, which we hear every Easter on the Easter Vigil as we cross over from last night to the joy of the Easter Resurrection Sunday, John's Gospel gives us an appearance of the resurrected body of Jesus. Mary runs into him at first in the garden, thinking he's the gardener, only then to come and recognize him. Interesting, isn't it, that the Gospel writers, as they're inspired by the Holy Spirit, choose to focus in on different details as they're sharing the message with the different audiences to whom they are writing the gospel. And it is by the power of the Holy Spirit that the totality of all four gospels gives us the message that we proclaim today and live by, that Christ is risen indeed. But it's the absence of the body, not only in the Easter gospel, but when we are confronted with death in life and the body is no more, that often fills us with questions and uncertainty and sometimes gets in the way of our faith and our trust in God, doesn't it? I mean, just look at those who were closest to Jesus, the apostles and the women. Before they actually ran into the resurrected body of Jesus, they were fixed, filled with fixed, mixed emotions. They were struggling with exactly what was going on and what to believe. And I think in the same way in our lives, as we are confronted with those times in life when the body is gone, when death meets us in the eye, to feel the same way. And the absence of the body of Christ in our gospel lesson today gives us the opportunity to focus for a little while on the gift of our bodies. How God has given us these blessings, not only for this life, but for what we confess is yet to come. We confess, we believe in the resurrection of the body. That these bodies are going to live again after death in eternity. Yet for the gift that these bodies are, sometimes I think in life, because of sin. The sin that permeates the world, as well as the sin that permeates our body. We not only have those questions, but we have a uh, love-hate relationship with our bodies. I mean, we today... Talk about body, body positivity, right? Accepting ourselves for who we are and all the differences, all the shapes, all the things. But for as much as we have that positive message of body positivity, do we really treat our bodies and care for them like the scriptures teach us that they are a temple of the Holy Spirit, that they are a gift of God unique to us, not only for a blessing in this life, but a blessing in the life yet to come. No, I don't think we do. I think sometimes, even though we're bombarded with these messages of being positive about our bodies, we all too often confuse the message. What do I mean by that? Well, for all of this, accepting all of us and all of our differences and all our shapes and sizes, we still become enslaved to and envious of all those perfect bodies that we're bombarded with on social media and in entertainment, don't we? And as much as we're supposed to accept our bodies for what they are, the gift that they are from God, we still seem to be obsessed with filters on Instagram or airbrushing, and there still is a great popularity to plastic surgery, isn't there? And for all of the messaging that's happened over the last few decades about physical fitness and moving our bodies and taking care of ourselves and eating right... Obesity is at higher levels than it's ever been before. And we constantly live by the motto, it's my body, I'll do what I want with it. But it often seems like that's a motto to do the things that aren't so healthy and aren't so good for our bodies. So as much as we're told by God that our bodies are a gift, as much as we confess that our bodies are going to live forever, 
we seem to devalue ourselves and our bodies. We seem to have a hard time caring for ourselves and the bodies the way God has called us to live. Well, the message to us today on Easter is that even though sin has ravished our lives and our bodies and they're not everything we want them to be, we are still precious in the eyes of God. Easter is the message to us that we are valued and loved so much that God cares for our bodies so much that he was willing to give of himself, to give his son in his body, to die and rise for us, to foreshadow what is yet to come for us, that just as Christ rose, we are going to live in the body forever. That's what we heard St. Paul talk about in our epistle lesson for today, for Easter, when he said, but in fact Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. What that means and what we confess when we say we believe in the resurrection of the body is that just as Christ rose and was there and real, that's our future. Now until we meet the risen Christ, until we're there, we have these struggles, just like the apostles did, right? They weren't so sure until that moment that Jesus came and met them. And once they met the resurrected Christ, the things we're going to hear about in the weeks ahead, those 40 days between Easter Sunday and the Sunday of the Ascension. Between that time, Jesus appeared and proved himself to them. And once they saw him, it changed their lives. They believed so much that Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life that they were then willing to give their bodies over to anything in this world. To be punished and put to death so that that message could go to all the ends of the earth. So we can hear it today. So we can hear the value that God has placed upon us and our lives and our bodies. But if you have questions, that's normal. God's people like the apostles and throughout the ages have had questions when death comes and the body is gone. And yet the church and the faith and what we have in Easter is there to comfort us. 1,000 years ago, the theologian Thomas Aquinas talked about the three properties that our bodies will have when we rise again. Our bodies eternal will have identity. Who we are in our sex, in our creed, our color, our culture, all the things that make us unique and identify us, we will have eternally, but they will no longer be tainted by the brokenness of sin and the imperfections that we so often focus on and they drag us down. We see Jesus after Easter and he's still who he was. He walks through locked doors, miraculous, yet he still sits with the apostles and eats with them. He is the glorified fulfillment of true God and true man together. And in the life yet to come, our bodies will have quality. Think about that time, maybe it's now, maybe it's not, where you were at your peak. Where you felt the best about yourself. You took the most selfies, you felt really good. Now imagine that multiplied a hundred times, a thousand times. That's what we're talking about. We see that with Jesus prior to the resurrection... There was a limitation to everything you would see through his humanity. But after the resurrection, he is in his full power, his full glory, as sin and death has been conquered. And in eternal life, when we are raised again, our bodies will have integrity. What that means is the things that we have lost in this life in our bodies due to sickness and sin will be restored and healed. Every single miracle that Jesus did in scripture when he healed, when he restored sight to the blind, when he healed the lepers, when he had limbs grow again, was foreshadowing the the healing that is coming eternally. And even Jesus himself in his own body after the resurrection has those same signs. Next Sunday we'll hear about doubting Thomas. And what did doubting Thomas want to see in order to prove that Jesus was alive to him? He wanted to put his hands in Jesus' side and in his marks where the nails were. And what does Thomas get? He gets exactly that. But they're healed. They're restored again in the resurrection. The promise to us 
that today is all about is how much God precious, how precious we are to God and how much God values us. Easter is God's gift to us to love ourselves and our bodies as much as God loves and values us. Every time we proclaim, Alleluia, Christ is risen, we are confessing our belief that we too are going to rise like Jesus in the body. That's what we confessed together at the beginning of our service in our psalm when we said, I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. Easter is God's gift to us that we are somebody. That even though we face and struggle with sin and sometimes it ravages our lives and our bodies, we are precious in God's sight. And just as Christ rose again in the body from the grave, we too, baptized into Christ, have that same assurance that when we die, we will rise in the body and live forever. Amen. Please stand as you're able. Let us raise our voices together, confessing our faith with the Christians throughout history in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, 
and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this day of resurrection joy, let us offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. Renewing God, the good news of your resurrection changed the world. Give church leaders and all the baptized the same excitement as the women at the tomb and inspire us to share your abundant life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Sustaining God, your creation abounds with signs of new life in budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants, and provide farmers with a plentiful harvest. Merciful God, sheltering God, strengthen and sustain all who support vulnerable people across the world. Empower government agencies and international organizations that provide for refugees and migrants forced to leave their homelands. Merciful God, encouraging God, you do a new thing among us. We pray for those gripped by fear and anxiety or who suffer in any way, especially all those we name at this time verbally or silently. Send us as your healing presence to places of hunger, pain, illness, or overwhelming sorrow. Merciful God. Surprising God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace. Give this community of faith a sense of joy and wonder in exploring new avenues of faith formation, worship, and discipleship. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Resurrecting God, you make us alive in Christ. Thank you for blessing us with faithful witnesses who now rest in you. Merciful God. We offer to you these petitions and those we carry in our hearts, trusting in your abundant and ever-present mercy. Amen. Please be seated as we have the opportunity now to give back that which God has given to us by receiving the offerings.
please rise? The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and glorious resurrection broke the bonds of sin and death and gave life to all creation. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Through Abraham, you promised to bless all nations. You rescued Israel, your chosen people. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise. And at this end of all the ages, you sent your Son, who in words and deeds proclaimed your kingdom and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, gracious Father, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promise feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord and of his resurrection, that we who receive the Lord's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest, until he comes as victorious Lord of all. For God has loved us so much that he has given to us his Son to be our Savior. Therefore, as God's beloved children, we have the courage to pray.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever.
Christ is risen. Go in peace, share the good news, hallelujah.